You may be wondering where I've been at for the past couple of weeks because I haven't released a video. We'll get to that in just a second, but I'm back now and I'm going to be talking to you about all the changes, the upgrades, and the future plans I have for my home theater room. There's lots of changes coming. I'm Barrett, this is Becca Tech. Welcome to the channel. So first we need to discuss where I've been at for the past couple of weeks, and I wish I could tell you guys it was some sort of top secret mission, saving the world, or some fancy vacation somewhere warm across the world, but unfortunately it's nothing that exciting. I do have a full-time job outside of YouTube, so that's been keeping me busy because things have been picking up there, and I do have a family with three kids as well, so that's been busy, and just the home life. I just wasn't able to make any time to, for uh, YouTube or to make any videos, but I'm back now and I have some awesome stuff coming your way, and I can't wait to share it with you guys and today we're going to talk about those plans. So in today's video guys I'm going to cover all of the gear that's come in in the past few weeks as well as some of the gear that I have coming that hasn't arrived yet and also all of my future plans for the home theater. I do have a lot planned over the next seven months including speakers, subwoofers and all kinds of cool gear so you're going to want to stay tuned to see what I have planned and then make sure you stay tuned on the channel because I have all of those videos coming out over the next few months. I know that there's some of you waiting on the budget tone winner processor review and I have been working on that I haven't forgotten about it it is coming but I do have to wait for the official unit before I can finalize and release my review so that is coming so make sure you stay tuned I have been working on the Anthem AVM 70 review as well uh, they have released an official version of ARC or Anthem room correction uh, but for those of you that follow the channel you know that I work out of town and they just happened to release that while I was out of town so I'm a little bit behind the game but I have been doing some testing with ARC and so far it is very promising it does sound very good uh, it's not all rainbows and butterflies but we're going to get to that all in the review so make sure you stay tuned for that but as I said today we're going to be giving you guys an inside look on what I have planned for my home theater all the gear that's come in all the gear that's coming and everything that I have planned for changes I have some pretty big changes planned for the base department for those of you that may know I already do have two 24 inch subwoofers so what could be bigger or badder than that well we're going to find out in this video so first let's cover the gear that's already come in so as you can see here on my table there is some gear that I've wanted for a while uh, and some that I've just been putting off and also one that I've been trying to get but of course I couldn't because they were always sold out so first things first let's start off with the Xbox Series X so I ordered this Xbox Series X from Costco after a friend of mine uh, from one of the audio groups had pointed out that the Costco online store had just gotten stock so a big thank you to Alex you know who you are much appreciated my friend so this particular Xbox Series X package did come with a second controller so it was a little extra money I believe it was 669 uh, Canadian dollars plus tax so it wasn't too bad at all and I'm glad that that finally came in just the other day so there's already a lot of unboxing videos on the Xbox Series X on YouTube, so I'm not going to bore you with another one, but I did want to give a kudos to Microsoft for their packaging. You can tell that a lot of thought and effort went into it, so kudos to Microsoft for packaging the Xbox Series X so well. Now all I need to do is get the Xbox One X out of the audio rack and put the Xbox Series X in its place, but this thing is actually pretty big. It's a lot bigger in person than I thought it was going to be, so I may have to move things around a little bit, but either way, that's going to be getting put in my audio rack very soon. Besides the Xbox, we have the Klipsch AW. W650 outdoor speakers. They're not actually for an outdoor setup. For those of you that are familiar with my uh, home theater setup, you know that I use outdoor speakers for my height channels. Uh, so I was using two different models. I was using the AW400s for my rear speakers and the larger AW650s for the front height channels. So now I'm just going to have four matching AW650s for both the rear and the front height channels. In my opinion, these AW650 speakers work fantastic for height channels, especially if you're in a situation where you can't cut holes in your ceiling for in ceiling speakers these are the next best thing they already have the u-bracket built in so they're very easy to mount to the ceiling and then you can adjust the angle of them very easily just by loosening the nuts on the side and then pointing them directly at your ears and then tightening them up and because they're clips they are a fairly sensitive speaker and also they have that forward clip sound which i believe helps a little bit in the channel separation between the floor speakers and the height channels so besides the xbox and the clip speakers i did get a mini dsp as well which most people do use for subwoofers but i won't be using it for mine so what will I be using it for then well we're going to get to that in just a second but before we get into what's happening in the base department of my home theater please consider subscribing and if you do you might as well tick the bell icon so you can be notified about my future videos and if you could take just one second out of your day to click the like button down below it takes no time at all but I really appreciate it also don't forget about the movie of the week it's down in the description below so we're going to talk about what's happening in the base department of my home theater in just one second there's just two quick things that I'd like to point out before we do 
I've actually been asked several times from some of my viewers about a Patreon, and it was something that I wasn't too sure about, or if I really wanted to do it or not. I was just kind of iffy about the whole Patreon thing, but I keep getting asked about it, so I did start up a Patreon. Uh, of course, there's no obligation, but if you guys are interested, the link's down below in the description. The last thing that I'd like to cover real quick is that yes, I do get sent the odd piece of gear for review, but in those videos I do tell you guys that it was sent to me for review, but for the most part, I purchase all this gear that you see me reviewing and comparing with my own money, and I must say, it does get insanely expensive. I do love checking out new gear and I love playing with it, and I love learning about these devices uh, on my own and, and experiencing them for myself, and then I love sharing that information with you guys, and I really hope that it helps you in making your buying decisions or even just being more informed about those products. But if you guys are interested in any of the gear that I cover in the links down below, please do consider using my links. It doesn't cost you guys anything extra, but it really does help out the channel. All right, so now that we got that all out of the way, let's move on to what I have planned for the base department in my home theater. So just a moment ago, I mentioned that I got a mini DSP and that it's not for my subwoofers, and it really isn't. Something that I've wanted for quite some time and I wanted to get my hands on were some Croson actuators. So I contacted Croson's a couple weeks ago and I ordered two actuators along with their amplifier. So so for those of you that aren't aware what a Croson actuator is, is it's actually a device that uh, moves up and down with the LFE signal. You place it underneath your seats, and actually I have some news <laughs> about my home theater seating that we'll get to in just a second, but once you place these uh, under your seats, essentially what it's doing is it's lifting your chair up uh, really quickly, but on a, obviously a very small scale, and it causes uh, tactile response for bass. Right now I do have a 24 inch subwoofer right behind my main listening position, which does give me some amazing tactile response. But at the same time, during some of the dynamic sequences, it can be a little bit hard on your ears uh, with pressurization. So the goal is to move that back a little bit and then use the Croson's uh, to give me that tactile response that I've come to uh, really love in my home theater system. I believe it just adds another level of immersion. All right, so that covers the Croson's, but I actually do have more planned for the base department, which we're gonna get to in just one second. But first, I want to tell you guys what's going on with my home theater seating situation. You may have already noticed that there's no uh, seats behind me like there normally is right here. There's just the one right here. And that's because I've sold most of my Valencia seating that I purchased about two years ago. Valencia was kind enough to send me uh, some units for review. So I'm really pumped for these. I don't, I don't normally get excited about seating. Uh, but I'm actually really excited for these chairs. They're really cool. And you're going to see why in the video. So make sure you guys stay tuned for that. All right, let's move on to one of my favorite things about my home theater, and that's the subwoofers. Uh, we're gonna talk about speakers and even plans for the whole room in general in just a second, but let's talk about subwoofers first. First of all, let me just say that I really do love my Funk Audio LFE 24 Ultra, as well as the Harbottle Audio C24 L2. Both of these subwoofers are top of their class with staggering output and as much clean and tight bass as you could ever dream of. But with that being said, my long-term goal for subwoofers in my home theater has always been to have four subwoofers, and of course it would be nice for all of those subwoofers to be matching. But I also didn't want to get anything other than a Funk Audio or Harbottle Audio subwoofer. Not that there isn't other capable subwoofers out there, of course there are uh, JTR and PSA, just to name a couple of them, uh, that have some really great output as well. But I just thought, like, these have staggering output, they have super clean bass, why would I try and experience something else when I think I've found uh, what I've been looking for in bass, uh, other than the fact that I just want more of them and I want them to be matching. So I've already placed my order for the first of four Funk Audio 24E subwoofers. The Funk Audio 24E is still a 24 inch subwoofer, but it does have less power and less output than the subwoofers I have now. But with four of them, I will get similar output overall, and it will be smooth across the whole room, obviously, with having four of them. So the first one should be arriving in about a month or so, and the other three I will have to wait a little while for, so probably to the end of summer, maybe the beginning of fall. Uh, but Funk Audio was awesome enough to work out a trade for the subwoofers that I have now uh, to work into the deal of the other three. So kudos to Funk Audio for working with me on that. I'm really pumped to get four of these in my room. I cannot wait. These four subwoofers, as well as the Croson's under the seat, should provide an absolutely euphoric bass experience that I have no doubt will be end game. Speaking of end game, for those of you that follow the channel, you know that my philosophy on speakers is that I didn't want to get to end game speakers too quickly. I kind of wanted to take my time and experience a lot of speakers along the way before I got to what would be considered end game. This way I could just experience a lot of speakers along the way for myself, uh, just because I do love trying out new gear, I love experiencing uh, new gear for myself, just for that knowledge base and just for the experience. 
And I really would like to continue on that path, and maybe I can if companies start sending me more gear and more speakers for review, but it would appear that a great opportunity for me to get uh, what would be considered endgame speakers may have come up. I don't want to say too much just yet as far as the brand and the model, uh, just because I want to make sure everything is finalized and it's actually reality um, before I make the big reveal. But uh, it would appear that in the very near future, I will be getting what would be considered end game speakers that not only look like a million bucks, but should sound like a million bucks too. That being said, I really have enjoyed my time with the SVS Ultra speakers. As a matter of fact, they've impressed me. Uh, they sounded better than I thought they were going to. Not, not that I thought that they were going to sound bad, but they actually uh, went above my expectations as far as sound goes. They sound really great for music. They sound fantastic for home theater. And I mean, in the Piano Gloss Black, I, may, I know that that may not work for everybody, but they look fantastic in my opinion. For the price of these speakers, I think you're getting the whole package great sound, great looks, and it works in all situations, in my opinion. So I'm not really getting rid of these speakers because I didn't like them or because they don't sound good. It's nothing like that. It's just I have a great opportunity uh, to get into what I would consider, or in my opinion, end game speakers. So I'd be silly not to take advantage of that opportunity. Okay, so that pretty much covers all of the gear that's come in, all of the gear that's coming, at least of course if everything goes according to plan. So let's talk about what's happening with the room itself. Those of you that follow the channel will know this already, uh, but I use just over half of our family room, which is 21 feet by 17 feet with eight foot high ceilings. It's a four level split home with three of those levels open to each other, the home theater being the third level. Right now I have the home theater set up, uh, I guess you'd consider it lengthwise. So the back wall of the home theater is open up to the rest of the home. So I have an idea that I'd like to change the orientation of the home theater or basically flip it 90 degrees. So instead of having the back wall being the open wall uh, for the home theater, I want to change it 90 degrees. So the right wall uh, when you're facing the screen would be the open wall to the rest of the house. I feel like this is going to help me a little bit with speaker placement as well as subwoofer placement, at least when I do get all four of the 24 E's. I also feel that this setup would work better if I ever do want to go with a projector in the future. Considering how close we sit to the display, uh, a projector isn't really needed. We're about six or six and a half feet away from the display. So if I did get a much bigger screen, we'd kind of just be looking around the room to see what's happening. Uh, right now, actually 75 inch TV does work really well for my situation. Even if I were to turn the theater the other way, we would still be about six or maybe seven feet away from the display. So a large hundred inch screen still isn't really needed, but who knows, maybe if they produce an OLED or a micro LED in the 85 inch range, I might go to something like that. Or maybe I'll just suck it up and go with a 77 inch OLED and be done with it. But I want to know what you guys think about all the changes and upgrades that I have planned. Drop your comments down below. Please let me know what videos you would like to see with all this gear. And please consider subscribing to the channel. And if you do, tick the bell icon. And please take just one second out of your day to click the like button down below. It takes you no time at all, but I really do appreciate it. Remember to enjoy your systems. I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.